Hi everyone, my name is Naoki, I'm a music producer and I create visualizers in Blender. Normally I'm the kind of person that does everything from scratch, I don't use any samples in my music, I model all my 3D stuff myself, and so to use a tool that does my work for me kind of feels wrong to me by default. But since everyone has been shouting about AI, I thought I'd give it a go and create a music video using three different AI tools. So in this video, I'm going to explain which tools I used, what I ended up with, and at the end, I'm gonna give you a review of my experience. So I read Daniel Susskind's book, World Without Work, last summer, and in his book, he talks a lot about the threat of technological unemployment. So basically the threat of AI stealing our jobs. But he also says that AI can be a complementing force to our creativity. All of that stuff sounds scary and fascinating in equal measures, so I thought that the best way to form my own opinion on this would be to simply try it out. I recently produced a song called Ethereal and I thought I'd ask AI to help me make the music video. You can watch the full music video by following the link in the description. So without further ado, I'm going to delve right in and talk about the three AI tools I used. First up is Midjourney. Among the list of AI image generating tools, Midjourney is pretty popular and surprisingly easy to use. You just fire it up in its Discord server and you literally type in what kind of image you want. For example, you can make custom images of alpacas in space or angry spaghetti just by typing a short description of what you want. Midjourney then spits out a bunch of images and you can either create some variations or up your favorite images. Midjourney has a whole bunch of other commands and you can go pretty deep, but you can also get really good results with these simple prompts. If you subscribe to their service, you can own the copyright to all the images you generate. I'm gonna come back to copyright a bit later in this video. For my video, I decided to create some nice bright skies with rainbows and prism effects, as well as this nice floating utopia. Unfortunately, I needed a music video though, not a music picture, which takes me to the next AI tool on my list, Runway. Now, AI platforms are developing amazingly fast and by the time I've uploaded this video, I bet you there'll be a new one again. But Runway is a really good all-rounder for making videos right now. Among some other cool stuff, Runway has a neat and fairly new feature called frame interpolation that you can use in order to stitch images together into a continuous movie. If the images are snapshots of a continuous movement, then you can get some quite realistic results. In my case, I put in my mid-journey images and I got these interesting kind of watercolor effects. Inside of Premiere Pro, I overlaid a few of these moving skies with some cloud stock footage and bam, I ended up with some nice moving scenes. In my song, I'm both singing and playing the violin, and since it's kind of a pop song, I thought it would make sense for me to actually be there in the video, singing, dancing and playing the violin. So I decided to get out my iPhone 11 Pro to record some cringy footage in my living room. Yay, who wouldn't? But how could I combine this footage with my AI backgrounds? The answer is simple, AI green screening. So inside of Runway, you have this neat feature where you can click on parts of your footage and Runway will automatically detect an outline. The more contrasting your foreground and background are, and the less busy your background is, the better it will work. You get more controls than in, say, TikTok, so it was pretty easy to separate myself from this white wall. For this footage, where you can see a lamp in the background, things were a lot trickier and I had to put in a lot of keyframes, which took me really, really long. In the end, my footage did end up looking a bit green screeny, but with some motion effects wizardry in Premiere Pro, I was able to smudge the worst of it away. I've also since tried the AI green screen function in DaVinci Resolve, which worked better for me, but every project is different, so I'd suggest trying a range of tools to see what works best for you. The last tool on the list is Plask, an automatic motion capture tool. So I created this little golden dude in Blender and I rigged him inside of Mixamo. Look at him, he's a nervous little happy bubble man. I'm not going into any detail as to how I modeled or rigged him, because otherwise this video will be 10 hours long. I'm just going to focus on the AI mocap side of things. So Plask is an AI tool that can actually extract motion data from a video, which is absolutely amazing. From a video I was able to extract a choreography, 
and I could then retarget that movement to the armature controlling my bubble man. I'm still not that advanced in Blender, so it took me quite a while to get there, but in the end I was excited to dance along with my little golden friend. Plast gives you 900 credits for free per day, which works out as about 30 seconds of footage, give or take, and that's pretty decent. Since I wanted to get the job done as quickly as possible, I did end up using only one day's credits, and so my bobble dude doesn't quite dance right through the end, so I had to work my Premiere Pro magic again. <laughs> Now that I had all my project paths together, I edited them all to perfection, or whatever you want to call this. I also have this funky mask part. Uh, this section was done using the Blend AR Track app for iPhone, which allowed me to turn my face into a Blender animation. In addition, I made a little moving low poly landscape, and I painted a few bits and bobs on my iPad. In a nutshell, I would definitely say that this was a collaborative effort with AI as a complementing force to my creativity. Now, as promised, I will give you my personal review of AI to wrap up this video. First of all, I know that there has been a lot of heat around AI. Platforms like Midjourney are trained on millions of existing images to create their outputs, and so it's unsurprising that artists that have not given their consent will feel uncomfortable with their work being used. I would definitely say that if you put in a prompt asking for art in the style of a specific artist and then pretended you painted it, that would be really wrong. In my case, I mainly created realistic-ish skies uh, and I agree no one owns the skies. I guess you could argue that I'm not really infringing on a specific person's right with something so generic. Still though, I'm not sure I really feel like I own the images that Midjourney made, even though I legally do. I'd love to hear your opinions on that in the comments. Here's another thought. It's often argued that humans are actually incapable of having original thoughts. Filmmaker Kirby Ferguson says that everything is a remix, and author Austin Kleon encourages you to steal like an artist. All great artists learn through imitation and by copying the great artists that came before them. So it can be surprisingly tricky to nail down who owns the copyright of an idea. We need to have a lot more discussions around the ethics of AI, but I don't think it's all black and white. To create good prompts can also be surprisingly tricky, to the point that there are now online courses that teach you how to talk to AI. On a more practical level, Midjourney is a language-based image generator, and I actually found it quite tricky to describe what I wanted. I can visualise images pretty clearly in my mind, and Midjourney actually ended up generating a whole bunch of stuff that didn't at all look the way I intended. Having said that, new AI research allows you to turn rough drawings into great images, so you're not limited to using language to use AI image generators. I will definitely keep using Plask because it's such an excellent way to transfer my movements to 3D characters. Similarly, AI green screening is great because it enables people like me to film a music video in my living room without the need for an actual green screen. I'm not sure I will use Midjourney in future videos, but that's mainly because I love the challenge of creating my own scenes in Blender. I would miss that feeling of accomplishment. Having said that, it did definitely speed up my process. There are many opinions about AI, but it is certainly fascinating and opens up many new creative possibilities. Going forward, we need to have some more in-depth discussions around the ethics and copyright law around AI. On the whole, the best way to form an opinion about AI is to simply try it out. On that note, I would love to hear what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos like this.